This lesson is titled Antiderivatives. You can think of an antiderivative as uh, doing, uh, undoing a derivative, basically. In this example, we've got find all possible functions f with the given derivative. So something has the derivative x. We need to figure out what functions have the derivative x. Well, if we started with half x squared, or x squared divided by 2, and took the derivative, 2 times a half is 1, which is what we have here, and reduce the power by 1 is x. That's what we have here. But realize we could have any constant added or subtracted here, and the derivative of that constant would be 0. So for example, there was a pi here, that, that would just 0 out. If there was a negative 72 here, that would just 0 out. Since we don't know what the constant is, we just put a little placeholder there, the c, to remind us that there could be any constant there. You try one. f prime of x equals 2, what would be a possible function that would have 2 as a derivative? If you said 2x plus c, you're right on track. Remember, you can pause these videos at any time. You can fast forward. You can rewind. You can do whatever you need to pace the lesson so that it works for you. Try this one. f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. Find any function that would have this as a derivative. Or find all of them. How about x cubed minus x squared plus x plus c? The derivative here would be 3x squared. That's what we see. The derivative here would be negative 2x. That's what we see. The derivative here would be 1. And we could have any constant. If you're looking for a shortcut after enough of these, you're going to see it. We add 1 to this value. That gives us 3. And then we divide by the new power. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. If we add 1 to this value, that gives us 2. And we divide by the new power. That gives us negative 1. And it's kind of clear just from uh, your experience that the derivative, the antiderivative of 1 would have to be x. Here's one a little trickier, just throwing in some trig here. What's a good calculus lesson without some trig? What would be the antiderivative of sine? If you said negative cosine x plus c, you're right on. Remember, you have to deal with the negative because the derivative of cosine is negative, and we're trying to end with a positive sign. So we need to undo that negative with a negative of our own. What about the derivative of e to the x, the antiderivative of e to the x? Well, that'd just be e to the x plus c. That's one of my favorite functions because its derivative is itself. It's the only one I know that does that. It's kind of neat. Here's an interesting one. I'll give you a hint. Just think of function. Think of a function. Don't be trying to go all quotient rule and stuff on this. Just think of a function. If you said f of x equals natural log of x minus 1 plus c, you got it right. Remember the derivative of the natural log is just the derivative of the function over the function. Well, here's over the function x minus 1, and the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. In this example, we have a particle moves in a straight line and has an acceleration, a of t, 6t plus 4. Its velocity, v of 0, is negative 6 centimeters per second. Its initial displacement, s of 0, is 9 centimeters per second. Find its position function, s of t. Recall that s of t is a position function. Its first derivative would be the velocity function. Its second derivative would be the acceleration function. Notice we've got the acceleration function, and we're trying to find out something about the position function. So if we take the acceleration function, find an antiderivative, we're going to be at the velocity function find an antiderivative of that, we're going to be at the position function. So this is just a matter of working backwards through derivatives here until we get back to a position function. So here's our acceleration function. Let's find an antiderivative of that. 6t squared over t or over 2 plus 4t is the same as 3t squared plus 4t plus c. They gave us some important information here v of 0 equals negative 6. Well, when I put in 0 for all the t's, it's supposed to equal negative 6. That's telling me that the constant here has to be negative 6. Now let's take the antiderivative of this. We've got the velocity function. We need to work back towards the position function. Take the antiderivative here. That suffice to t cubed plus 2t squared minus 6t plus some constant. Let's call this one d so it's different than c. And again, they gave us s of 0 equals 9, so that means when t is 0, d, or this constant, has to be 9. So our function, s of t equals t cubed plus 2t squared minus 6t plus 9, would be the function we're looking for. You try one. 
we've got a second derivative, just like having a acceleration function. They're told, they tell us f of 1 is 5, and f prime of 1 is negative 3. We are asked to find the original function f. Go ahead and pause the video and give this a try. Let's see. What we would do here is we would take the derivative of this function. If we take the derivative of this function, we're going to be at f prime. So f prime of x equals, if we add uh, 1 to this, we'll have x cubed. Divide by our new power, which would be 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Plus, if we add 1 to this, we'd get x squared. Divide by that, we'd get 1. So it's 1x squared. And the 10 is going to be a 10x, and then there's plus some value, c, that we don't know. However, when f is 1, we're supposed to get 5. So that tells us, actually, we need to be working on f prime here, because we're dealing with f prime, so let's work with the right function. When f prime is 1, we're supposed to get negative 3. So we know that f prime of 1 is negative 3, so that would equal 8 times 1 cubed plus 1 squared plus 10 times 1, that equals plus c. So negative 3 is the same as 8 plus 1 plus 10 plus c. What does this equal? 19. If we subtract that 19 from both sides, we end up with what? Negative 22. So f prime of x is equal to uh, 8x cubed plus x squared plus 10x minus 22. We're still looking for f, so let's take that antiderivative of this. So f of x would equal x to the fourth. Divide that here. We'd get 2x to the fourth plus one-third x cubed plus 5x squared minus 22x plus some other constant. I'm just going to use c again. Actually, I don't want to use c again. I don't want to get confused, so I'm going to use d. d f of 1 is supposed to equal 5. So when I put 1 into this function, I'm supposed to get 5. So let's put 1 into that function and get 5. Let's see, 2 times 1 to the 4th is 2, plus 1 third times 1 cubed is 1 third, plus 5 times 1 squared is 5, minus 22 times 1, plus d. Let's see what we have here. I have 7 minus 22 would be negative 15. If I add that to the other side, I have 20. I still have that 1 third to deal with, plus d. I need to subtract a third. So basically I have 19 and 2 thirds is equal to D. So F prime, not F prime, we're looking for F, just plain old F here. I know I erased the whole thing, that's kind of silly. F of X is equal to 2X to the fourth plus 1 third X cubed plus 5x squared minus 22x plus, I ran out of room here, 19 and 2 thirds. That's our final answer right there. If we want, we could double check this, make sure f of 1 is 5, make sure when we take the derivative and then the derivative again, we get this function right here. I'll leave that check for you. That's our learning target for the day. I'll see you in class.